Yu-Gi-Oh! has over 10,000 unique cards in its card pool, and thanks to tools such as TCG Player and eBay, duelists all around the world can pick up any card they would like with just a click of a button. But what if those tools didn't exist? What if the only way you can attain new cards was by opening packs? Starting off with three Fire King structure decks and a budget of $50 a week, I must build a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck by only using sealed product. No buying, no trading for cards. All leading up to doing Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest challenge, topping a YCS. This is the Fire King sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh. Alrighty, time to open up another tin. So we started off the series opening up the 2021 tins, and now we're going to move one year ahead and open up the 2022 tin. So what's in here that's actually worth opening? Well, a couple things actually. Uh, number one is Tribegage Kit and Tribegage Bear Brum are in this set. I think Bear Brum's a ultra, uh, ultra, and a kit is a secret rare. And those, if we can pull those will finish off our Tribegage cord. I think it's more important to pull Bear Brum just because we can do more with Bear Brum, but pulling both Kit and Bear Brum would be nice. So those are very important things in this tin that we can pull. But another thing in here is going second cards. There's like a lot of hand traps. There's stuff like Ash, Nibiru, Droplet, Dogwood is in here, Ghost Miner is in here. There's a lot of good hand traps in this tin that got reprinted. So pulling any of those can help us with our going second option. So very, very good. We got three of these tins and there's three packs per tin. So we're gonna open nine packs of these, but we still did have a little bit of budget left. So I decided to buy one more uh, pack of rarity collection. One, just cause this has hand traps. So being able to improve the hand trap on it's gonna be nice. And if we could pull the third into your servant out of this, that'd be lovely as well. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the pack opening. So for three 2022 tins and one pack of Rarity Collection 1, the total price ended up being $49.24. Alrighty, so I got the packs out of the way. So we again, we have three of these tins and I didn't mix up the packs at all. So they're representative of each tin here. So we're gonna start off with the 25th anniversary. So I'm gonna move this up here and then open up the, the Rarity Collection first. So let's see what we can get out of this, if I can get it out of the pack. Okay, we're starting off with a Lava Gold. Let me get that focused here. Uh, nothing we can really do, just because we do need our normal summon. Lantia, a secret rare Lantia. I mean, that's cool. I don't know if we're ever going to use it. Maybe if we move to a format where there's a lot of banishing, we could. But yeah, Lantia doesn't really do anything for us. A Striker Dragon. I think this is the, the, the collector rare version of it. Uh, again, nothing we can really do with it, unfortunately. Uh, Mech, Mech Knight Crusadia Abermax. That's a cool Link 4 we can technically play, which would be cool, so we'll consider it. This is something. And then a Paul, oh, okay, Pot of Prosperity. That's pretty cool as well. That's a, I don't know if we can necessarily use it, but like just having it in our collection is pretty nice. And that is it for the Rarity Collection. So, I mean, nothing really much, but again, this was just the last bit of budget. I decided just to buy one pack. So now let's actually get into the 2022 tins here. Again, this has Kit, this has Bear Brum, and then it has a couple hand traps we can maybe use. So hopefully we can pull something good. Let me make sure this is in frame. So again, we'll kind of skip the commons because I don't think there's really anything that we need in the commons here. Psychic Razor is cool, but we have Hail of the Abyss. Uh, just kind of skip these commons. Okay, Super Rare Gunkin Suship Shari. That's nothing we really can do with this. A ZS Armor Stage as our other super rare. I think there's two super rares in this set. So the next one should be a secret. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's the Ultra. Never mind. It's Synchro Overtake. Again, nothing we can really do with this, but I guess, I mean, it's something, I guess. Uh, the Breaker Ruin God. Again, nothing we can really do with this, unfortunately. Okay, so the next one should be a secret rare then. And that is a, a Greater Polymerization. Again, fortunately, not something we can use for our strategy, so kind of a dud of a first pack and then just some commons afterwards. All right, let me actually, hold up, let me quickly organize this. So the commons will go here, out of frame, we'll put the secret and then the super up here. Okay, next pack up here. If I can quickly open this, I don't want this to take as long as it took the other tins to open, so we'll kind of skip through really fast, so again, Kind of skip the commons, there's really nothing we really need in the commons. We have a rare rank up magical Zexal Force, which we again don't really need. There we go. That's a hand trap we will take. Ghost Moaner and Moonlit Chill. That is a for sure hand trap we can play. Pretty good that we pulled this. 
a Fluandery Stride. Nothing we can really do with that. Stardust Synchron as our Ultra Rare. Alveon, the Entity Vanities as our other Ultra Rare. I remember when this card was hyped up because of Ready Fusion. Garbage card. And then, oh my god, we pulled a Lightning Storm. That's really cool as well. This is another, like going second card maybe more of a side deck option but a card we can use nonetheless so we will gladly take a lightning storm for sure and that is it for the second pack now let's get into the last pack of this tin again we need a kit uh, we need a bear brum one probably take a bear brum more than we need a kit if we only need to pull one but i would love to pull both but uh last pack of the tin again we'll kind of just skip through the commons here nothing we really need here, uh, rare Scared Gold gimmick legend, nothing we can really use. Uh, Live Twin, Kiss a Kill Frost is our first super. Again, nothing we can really do with that. Sunvine Crossbreed as our second super. Again, nothing we can really do with that. Dark Eye Nightmare as our ultra rare. Eh, whatever. Uh, Contact with the Abyss as our other ultra rare. That's not what we needed. We needed a fucking bear, but I'm not, a, not that. And oh! There we go. That's the kit. Okay, so we pulled ourselves kit. Gladly take this pull. So we actually have kit in our rotation now. Now we just need the bear brum is all we need. And we have two more tins. So we still have six more packs. But we will gladly take the kit. That's exactly what we needed. We just, even if we just get the one, we, all we really need is just the one. So we'll gladly take it. Now on to the second tin here. The first pack of the second tin. So if we can pull a bear brum, we pretty much finish out our tribe gauge core. Uh, more hand traps would be lovely as well to get out of this. So again, we'll kind of just skip the commons here because we don't really need the commons. Our rare is Ultimate Dragon Utopia Ray. Super rare, Dynamanier, Denmari Attic Mister. Sorry, uh, nothing we can really do. White, White Knight of Dogmatica. I mean, if we want to really go into party to the Dogmatica, we could, but probably not. Uh, Dark Infant Attic Mister as our Ultra Rare. Nothing, again, nothing we can really use. Shifter. <laughs> I mean, that's a hand trap, but not a hand trap we can technically use. This isn't terrible to pull because we do have Cross Out Designator. So, like, Cross Out can technically call Shifter. We can put this in our side deck if we're really scared of Shifter, but, like, that's about it. There's nothing we really can really do with Shifter. And then Branded Opening as our Secret Rare. Again, nothing we can really do. This is a cool little secret for us but or like for just in general but nothing we can really do with it with our strategy all right now to the second pack of the second team here get this out of the way we just need a bear bro and then a couple hand traps would be nice after that so we'll kind of just skip the comments because again i don't think there's really anything in the comments that we need uh stardust illumination as our rare there nothing again nothing we can really do another evil light live twin uh kiss to kill frost again nothing we can really do with that High Ritual Art as our super rare there. Ultra rare Branded Bond. Again, nothing. This is a worthless card. We don't need that card. Uh, Baby Mud Dragon as our other ultra. Oh my god. Fucking shit ass ultra. And then Secret Rare is Lincoln to the Frames. I mean, if we were playing like. Uh, what's that? Uh, the, the Magical Muskets. This would be a cool card, but nothing we really need for us and then just a bunch of commons that we did not need and then last pack of the last tin again we just need a bear brum just give us a bear brum so we can actually play with like something like a revolt would be nice again we'll skip the commons because again we don't really need commons here let me just whoa. okay okay there we go radiance uh various science is our super rare uh to start us off magical cylinders as our other super rare not what we needed uh, a Threshold Borg as our first Ultra Rare. Uh, Scrap Raptor, that's a cool little Ultra Rare, but nothing we can really do with it in our strategy. And then Secret Rare, Drama Dramage Turge of Despia. Again, really cool for the Despia stuff if we're doing like a branded thing, but again, we're not doing anything with branded, so nothing we can really do with that Secret Rare, unfortunately. Okay, second tin wasn't really worth that much, I guess. Uh, now on to the last uh, tin. Again, hopefully we can pull this fucking bear brum so I don't have to open lightning overdrive because I really do not want to open lightning overdrive. Again, we'll kind of just skip the commons because again, there's really nothing we can really use out of the commons. Uh, Glacier Aqua Mador as our rare. Uh, Trap Trick Corellia as our super rare. I mean, nothing we can really do with that. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherry. That is another hand trap, but probably not a hand trap 
uh, we can use, unfortunately, just because the extra decks are just so generic nowadays that there just isn't really a good target for Reaper. Ultra Rare is Dragon Lark Perrin. Um, yeah, nothing we can really do with this Ultra Rare. And then Stardust Trail as our second Ultra Rare. That's unfortunately not what we needed. Oh, I skipped the fucking secret, which was Branded Opening again. Oh my god, we pulled a second copy of Branded Opening. Man, if we really were doing a Branded Sealed Only, this would be insane, but... Uh, we're not, so we're nothing we can really do with that. Okay, second pack of the last 10. Again, please hope to God we need a fucking bear brum. Please let us get a fucking bear brum out of this. Oh, okay, skip the commons here because we really need nothing out of the commons here. Oh, my bad. Let me get this more in frame. Alrighty. Oh, that was, I skipped the rare there, but now super rare is Goat Kinsu Ship Shari. Again, that's our second one. Don't need that. Uh, Virtual Gate Zhao Wu is our... Uh, other super rare secret overtake that's our second one of that that's unfortunate we do not need another secret overtake and then ai meet you as our other rare or ultra rare damn it not what we needed not what we needed we need the fucking bear bro god damn it and then a second link into the frames as our fucking secret rare nothing we can really do i mean we're not we're not even pulling the hand traps unfortunately damn that sucks okay we have one more pack. Let me just quickly move this out of the way. Okay, one more pack, please. Just a bear drum. Just a bear drum. Please give me a fucking bear drum. That's all we need. That's all we need is a fucking bear drum. Okay, skip the commons. Really do not need the commons out of this set. Whoa, whoa what the fuck? You, this is like miscut to all hell. What the fuck? Okay, I mean, whatever. But that was, what a fucking cut that was. Already, our rare is Toto, which we don't need. Super rare is Sun Avalon, or Sun, yeah, Sun Avalon Link 2 that we definitely do not need. Screams of the Branded is our other super rare. Again, nothing we really need from that. Ultra rares, okay, please. <sighs> Phronix Guardian Sphinx as one of our ultras, okay. We still have another one, please. Bear Brum, just give me a fucking Bear Brum, please. That's all I need. Are you fucking kidding me? Breath of the Acre. <laughs> Shit. Are you? This is fucking trash. Oh my god. Okay, that was really, really bad. Can we just get pull a good secret out of this, please? Please. Another one. Oh my god. That's so bad. We pulled so much branded shit. Brand two branded opening. Dragon. Oh my god. That is not what we need. So I mean. Honestly, that wasn't really a good opening. I mean, we did pull the kit, so we have the kit now, which is really, really cool. But, like, that's it. That's really else. I mean, we have a Ghost Mourner as well from our Supers, but, like, man, that tin was hot ass. Oh, my God. I mean, at least we pulled kit, but, man, I really wanted a Bear Brum out of that as well. So, I guess that's it for the opening. So, let's, let's, let's get to the deck profile, shall we? All righty. Now, on to the deck profile profile and to be honest with you there really isn't that many changes which isn't surprising considering that this opening wasn't really that good for us but not that many changes so let's actually get into the deck profile shall we so we'll start off of course with the fire king stuff uh this is the same amount of ratios we're still playing the three kirim one grunix one ponix one arbita and then the one baron still standard ratio again the baron gets cut once we eventually pull old canics but for right now this is really all we really need for the fire king stuff nothing really changed pretty standard ratio for us now on to the lairless package we are playing three turquoise warbler two barrel canary one sapphire swallow and of course the one cobalt sparrow again still the same thing we were playing last week i'm still considering cutting uh, uh the sapphire swallow uh but again nothing we can really uh I mean, I think this is probably fine. Uh, again, I cited this card out a lot going second, but again, I think this is probably a perfectly fine ratio for us. Now on to the tribe gauge stuff. We are playing two fractal, one kit that we did pull this week. The one Nerval and the one Karas. We're still on the one Nerval. The reason why I'm still on one is because um, we still don't have enough extra deck link to guys just yet just because like if we had like the bear rub or if we had like you know other things like ancient warrior oath or just any link to that we can you know make off the tribe gauge guys then i'd be playing multiple nerve ball but just as of right now we just don't really have the extra deck built for it so we all you really need is just the one nerve ball and that's it we have multiple ways to access it again it would be fine to play at two but again i think perfectly 
buy net one just because we're still on the very small engine of the tri gauge stuff. So I think this works perfectly for us. Now, uh, we're still playing the one Dogmatica Max Maximus, but I did cut the Dogmatica Fleur just because we didn't really need the Fleur. We honestly just need the Maximus just to get to the uh, Fire King stuff. We really didn't need anything else. So we're just going to play this by itself at the one of for, for now. Again, the Nadir stuff is getting really close to being cut, but it survived the chalk buck this week. I was really close to cutting it this week to try something like a Jack in the Hand, but I decided just to keep it in for this week, but I did cut the Fleur. Now on to the going second cards. We are still playing the three drone Lockbird. We are playing the only two Dogrand this time because we decided we wanted to play the one Ghost Mortar we pulled this week. We're still playing three Dark Hole and we're still playing three Infinite Impermanence. This still works for us. Again, I'm cutting this down to two just because again, this doesn't necessarily do anything for us going first. You might be arguing Dark Hole might not either. But again, if we have like a dead Ponyx in our hand that we can't get out of our hand. We can go Dark Hole, blow up a fire, and then special Ponyx, right? So that's still something, right? Compared to what, like, a Dog Rand is literally nothing for us. The only second besides it being a fire to pop off of something like Island, and that's about it. So, and again, I think the One Mortar is worth playing for us as of right now. Again, hopefully we can get some more hand traps in the future, but for right now, those will work. Now onto the Spell Traps. We're still playing the Three Tanky. We are playing the Two Bird Call. We're still playing the two Nadir package, and then of course the one Island, one Sanctuary, and the one Skyburn. Again, very stuff with the same stuff we've been playing. Again, Nadir nearly got cut for something like a Jack in the Hand, um, I decided just to keep it in for this week, but this, this is getting really close to being cut. But for right now, it did survive the chopping block, so that is it for the main deck. Now let's get into the extra deck. So, starting off with Link Monsters, we are still playing the one Hita, the one Proxy F Magician, the one Farajit, one Rugal, the one Omen, and we decided to put in the Avermax this week as well. Just as another link, this was the Tornado Dragon spot. I decided to put this in its spot instead just because I think this is more likely to come up compared to Tornado Dragon, but still very less likely to come up, but might have a chance to make this. But that is it for the link package. It's pretty much standard stuff after that that we played last week. Now on to the XYZs. This is pretty much the same thing that we played last week. We're playing the two Recital, the one Promenade Thrush, the one Assembled Nightingale, and then of course the one Zeus, and then two Grunix, um Eternity as well. Again, very the same stuff that we did last week, but again, this is a really, really good package that really does come up all the time for us, so not going to be cutting it anytime soon. And then, of course, for the last two cards, we are playing the Titanoclad and then the Pegasus Attic Mister. Again, this might be a little weird that we're still playing the Titanoclad, and even though we're not playing the Maximus anymore. But the reason why we're doing that is because we just need a fusion target for the Ultimate Slayer, and honestly, there really isn't another good fusion target that we have, so we're just going to play the Titanoclad there instead. And then, obviously, the Pegasus Attic Mister is really good with the Maximus, so we don't really want to cut that just yet so that is it for the extra deck now on to the side deck we're still playing the three alpha this card is fucking insane it comes up every time really really do love it we're still playing the uh the sacred uh, phoenix of nethus again this is just a feather duster it hasn't really came up in the series just yet but i think it's perfectly fine we are drawing a try to one shifter and this matters as well the two cross out designators so what, considering what happened last week or like the last two weeks the one losses that we have happened is because of shifter so what i decided to do is go play two cross out with the one shifter so we side this in going first against like a shifter deck and hope to god we just don't lose the shifter so this is kind of our out to that so that is it for the monster for the side deck so obviously we're playing the two cross out for the spells we're still playing the one ultimate slayer and we're playing the lightning storm as well really really good card that we did pull so very nice especially going second for us as well so this can be really really good for us and then obviously for the traps the traps have still not changed we are still playing the three power sink stone and then the three solemn judgment for that so that is it for the deck now let's get into locals all righty we're here at duke city games and uh it's going to be a little bit of a smaller tournament there's only eight players registered right now we might get one or two more after that uh, but again, we need to do really well because Rage of the Abyss is still the prizing. If we can pull an Olcanic, which is what we really need, it'd be insane. So, uh, but my phone is nearly dead, so we might only get like two rounds just because I was doing stuff to like build Edison decks before this point for an event that I'm doing tomorrow. But 
Uh, so we might only get two rounds recorded, but again, I'll discuss about all the rounds that we do play. So yeah, we'll catch you after round one. All right, OTS pack opening. Let's pull a Diabell star is what I need. I think it's in the front, so it kind of be like this. Right hand, Metal Morph, and hey, I pulled a chicken game. I don't know what that does, but I pulled a chicken game. So as you can clearly see with the background of the video right now, we are no longer at locals because we're going to be trying something new this week because there was only three rounds of locals at the uh, locals I decided to record for for this week and we only ended up playing two rounds because one of the rounds ended up being a buy for us so that's very unfortunate but it does happen so instead of covering uh, every round I play and giving you like a two to three minute recap I decided how about we just talk about one round this time but we watch the entire match instead and I give you a uh, play-by-play commentary so do let me know in the comments uh, down below which version you like either the I cover every round but only give you two to three minute recaps of it or I cover one round and watch but we watch the entire match do let me know which version of the locals you like in the comments down below so but actually talking about locals um we went one and two and obviously the one win was a you know buy so that's very unfortunate uh the uh, decks we played was fire king which we're about to watch right now and memento and in the memento match we got 2 0 in like 15 minutes because game one i like super bricked and then in game two like i set up a board but he uh cracked through all of it he didn't kill us but we couldn't do anything on the crackback so we just ended up losing that match but in the fire king matchup it was really, really good. This is our actually first um, uh, mirror match in the series, which is really, really cool. And it was actually kind of a back and forth matchup. So uh, without further ado, let's actually watch the match, shall we? So uh, this is our hand for game one. We have Tanky, Warbler, Kieran, Nerval, and Droll. And we ended up going second because we did lose uh, the die roll. So um, our opponent leads with uh, Normal Summon, Ponix, Ponix Effect to go ahead and search for uh, Sanctuary. Uh, from the deck obviously and then we uh, droll him on resolution which actually ends up doing quite a lot because he ends up just going set one pass which is really really good for us so we draw for turn uh, we go ahead and uh, activate tanky here we go tanky search for fractal we go fractal effect here we'll go ahead and dump cobalt to the graveyard because since we do have the warbler in hand well special warbler warbler effect this does get met with infinite impermanent so we don't get the cobalt out from the graveyard but that's fine because we go ahead and normal summon the nerval we go nerval effect banishing two for cost to summon out ferrigy here sorry about the glare but uh we go into ferrigy uh we overlay into a recital starling here he goes kieran effect which you know is weird but then he shows why he's activating kieran effect because he actually hard drew uh the garunix here so he goes garunix effect in hand goes garunix effect pop kieran from the uh the deck then go kieran effect Special Ponix from the graveyard and then pop the Recital Starling here. And then he goes Ponix Effect to search for Island. And then Nerval here in the graveyard for us will search for Kit. Then we go Kiros Effect Pitching Kit. And then uh, we go Kit Effect, which I don't think we really necessarily need to do just because there's really nothing we can dump off of it. So we just end up uh, dumping a Fractal here. But we go Kiros Effect Banishing 4 for cost here to go ahead and Special Summon omen from the uh, extra deck and obviously he knows what's going on we go omen effect to banish the grunix on field just to make sure grunix is no longer access access accessible to him which is very important in the mirror match so we link the omen and the uh Kiros off into proxy uh we go omen effect he chains ash there which is unfortunate because we really don't have an, any way to proxy so we go or uh, into ponix uh, we so we go to battle we go farage attack into the ponix we go main phase two go kieran effect Pop the Proxy F Magician Special Summon here, and then we go ahead and link off into Hita. If you're asking why the hell do we do that, is because we're locked into the Tribe Gauge Lock, where we can't use anything except for we Beast, Wing Beast, and Beast Warriors for Link Material, and obviously uh, the Proxy F is a Cyber, so we can't use it as Link Material. So that's why we had to do that Proxy to go into the Hita here. Uh, then we go Hita Effect to go ahead and Special Summon uh, Ponix from the graveyard, uh, from his graveyard, and then we go Ponix Effect search for sanctuary this is a reason why Hita is super important for the extra deck because we do end up versing like a fire mirror match we can actually get to our engine with Hita by stealing like a ponix or like an ash if we verse like like pure snake eyes or something like that so we go sanctuary here to go ahead and go for fire king island and then we go fire king island effect we pop the uh Hita here just to make sure he doesn't have ponix back in his rotation we search for garunix garunix effect here we'll go ahead and pop barong from the uh deck here we kind of can't see it there we pass on that uh, obviously we know two cards in his hand is uh, Sanctuary and Island, so, you know, Sanctuary kind of dead there. We go uh, Standby, we go Bearing Effect to search for 
uh, Kieran here, and then he goes activate sanctuary, which doesn't matter because we already we already know he has the Fire King Island in his hand. We go uh, activate the island island effect to pop Kieran and search for uh, Arvita, and then we go Kieran effect in graveyard. We special the Arvita from hand, and we pop the sanctuary here. And then we go battle phase, attack into the Ponix, which gets him back the Ponix into rotation here. He sets one, and then will pass to us here. Uh, we uh, He gets Ponix back in the standby phase, which does matter, because now uh, the Arvita negate is live. We go Island Effect, popping Kieran, uh, searching Ponix. Then we go Kieran Chain Link 1, Ponix Chain Link 2, so we do chain block the, the uh, Ponix. Uh, he goes Arvita negate the Ponix in hand, so he doesn't special summon. So we go Kieran, special the Baron here. Baron popped the back row, which ended up in Impulse, which is very good, so we ended up chain blocking in the correct order. We normal summon the Ponix here. Ponix effect will go ahead and search for Skyburn. And then we go uh, Maximus, which is a hell of a top deck, by the way. Special um, Binding the Proxy, and then specialing. Then we dump Wind Pegasus and Titanoclad. Obviously, the Titanoclad doesn't do anything because we're no longer playing the Fleur. Then we go uh, Skyburn here, target the uh, Barong, and target the Sanctuary. And then we go attempt to do Wind Pegasus adding Nister, but we can't because uh, the Wind Pegasus adding Nister needs to see an opponent destroy one of our cards by card effect. So you could probably see that and the Nadir package probably leaving next week. We'll talk about that more next week though. Uh, so we this is an illegal activation here, but uh, so uh, we go ahead and we go Ponix attack, but then just not trigger the adding Nister, which just ended up forgetting. So I guess I just misplayed there. So we attack and just take damage for no reason. We pass to him here uh, in the standby here. Obviously we can get, uh, he gets his own Ponix back. Then we get our Ponix and then we get our uh, Baron here to go ahead and search for Kieran. So, you know, we still have the, the Ponix and Kieran. He goes Island Effect here, destroying the Arvita on his field. Go ahead and search for, um, uh, what's his fucking name? The, uh, the Olcanics, which is a very desperate card we need. We, he normal summons Olcanics. He Arvita brought back Kieran off that effect, so he normal summons Olcanics here. Uh, Olcanics pop Kieran, uh, then search just for another Kieran here, and then goes Kieran effect. Uh, special back Arvita, and then he has Ponix in hand, so he chain blocks it with that as well. Special summon Ponix, and obviously he will pop the Maximus off the Kirim, the special Arvita. He links the Ponix off into a really his anima here. Then goes Kirin effect to go ahead and pop the Olcanix. Special itself, Olcanix effect in Graveyard to summon out OG Garunix. And then he goes Battle Phase here. This does matter, so his Maximus send, he sent an Amblo well off of it. So this matters because he goes Crash the Relinquished into the Garunix here. And then go Effect in Graveyard of Amblo well banishing itself since a link was destroyed to destroy a card on my field here he attempts to pop garunix but the skyburn in graveyard effect will protect the garunix here he goes overlay into the rank eight in main phase two using not using the effect we'll set one card and pass back to us here in the stat or we so on our turn we go island effect again popping kieran again searching for arvita and then we go kieran chain link one Ponix chain link two like we did in the last turn here we go uh actually goes through so Ponix will special itself and then we go a uh, special about uh Barong here and pop the back row which ended up being infinite and permanent so nothing really you can do uh, and then we go ahead and normal summon the arvita that we did search off the island here. So we go battle. Uh, we go Arvita attack into his Arvita, but obviously our tanky will be boosting up the Arvita so we can actually do that. He decides to not activate the Arvita effect in graveyard just because we do have the way to negate with our Arvita. So he draws for a turn here. Goes ahead and does the rank 8 to detach to attempt to pop island. We do imperm here. I think this is a misplay. I think we should have Arvita negated it instead, but we do choose to imperm it here. So we go battle. He crashes into Arvita, and then now we actually decide to remember. So we go chain link 1, Arvita, and then chain link 2, Wind Pegasus, Agnister to shuffle back the uh, the Garunix, which is very, very important because that, that rank 8 was a problem for us. So we special out Kieran. But he shows he hard drew the OSS, which is why I think we should have saved Imperm there. Uh, he goes uh, Ash, Chain Link 1, and then Island a Mandatory as well. So he searches Oak off the Ash, and then Island will blow up his Ash. He normal summons Oak here, goes Oak Effect, target his Ash, special summon out Ash, and then uh, uses one of the effects to special summon out a Flamberg, and then goes Flamberg Effect, uh, targeting the Garunic, which is uh, very important because he forgot about Arvita's effect because it will blow up Kieran in the end phase here. So he attempts to pass to us, but obviously the Arvita has to go through. You pop the Kieran, the Kieran effect will trigger special back Arvita, and then uh, Kieran will pop the uh, the Flamberg here. He will attempt to do Flamberg effect. We have Arvita. We haven't used it this turn, so we go Arvita to negate. He sees the writing on the wall and then concedes game one there. So we end up taking game one in a really kind of grind match. I think we both misplayed a lot there, but obviously uh, the mirror match 
Uh, we were both new to the mirror match, I will say. So uh, that's a little bit of a thing to say we did misplay, but we ended up taking the game one. So uh, game two, he ends up going first once again. He goes uh, Deception here, which is really, really good. Uh, you know, an engine we don't have access to. Search for Hollow Azumina. Hollow Azumina, send it to Deception to special out the fusion that can search for a sinful spoil. I forget the name of it. Uh, we go the effect to search out a sinful spoil card. We search out Wanted from the deck here. Then we go... Um, Hollowed Azumina affecting Graveyard, shuffling back the fusion on field, which meaning he doesn't have a normal summon in his hand. He goes to Hollowed Azumina here, chain the Wanted here to search out a Dia Bell Star from the deck, and then all Hollowed Azumina sends the Wanted on field to special out the Omni Negate here. Then goes Dia Bell Star, pitch uh, Dia Bell Star effect to set, uh, to set OSS here. Activate OSS, sending the Dia Bell Star to special out uh, Ash here, and then goes Snake Eyes Ash effect to search out Ponix here. And then, obviously, he will just go normal summon Ponix. Ponix effect here to search for Sanctuary. Sanctuary effect to go ahead and get Island here. And then we go uh, Island effect to pop the Ponix and go ahead and search for Arbita. Grunix was in Graveyard. That was the tribute off Deception. So he actually ended up drawing Grunix both games here. So he goes Grunix effect in Graveyard special. Grunix effect uh, to pop a uh, Old Canix. And go Old Canix effect to summon out the OG uh, Grunix here. Then we go... Uh, Ash effect sending the OG Garunix and Ash to summon out Flamberg. And then we link off the Flamberg and the Garunix into an IP Mascarena. Go ahead and do Flamberg effect, special back Ash and Ponix here. And then we go into a Promethean Princess here with IP and uh, Ash. And then go Promethean effect to bring back Flamberg. And then Flamberg to go ahead and put IP back into the spell trap zone. And then we go uh, link off into an Amblo Whale here. He'll go ahead and set two here. He wanted draws of card as well. And then end phase, he gets Deception back as well. So kind of a huge task for us to break this field. We go ahead and normal summon Arvita here. And then we go Dark Hole. And he will chain the, uh, the Omni Negate here to negate Dark Hole. And I just decide not to use Arvita. I decided, yep, that's fine. Should have used Arvita there. Even if it does eat an Imperm, at least it eats a two negations there. But I decided not to use the Arvita effect. He goes, on resolution, Flamberg effect, target the IP. This is where I chain the Arvita to negate, which is probably going to have to do. Uh, we pop Kieran in hand. We go Kieran effect in uh, Graveyard. Chains Dominus Impulse, which is very unfortunate. He goes, uh, Tanky, I activate Tanky here. Uh, go ahead and search for Fractal. And then we go Fractal Effect. This is where he chains Ash Blossom, which, again, very unfortunate. So we go to battle here. We go Arvata Crash. We go uh, Ponix Chain League 1, Arvada Chain League 2, targeting Kieran. So we bring back the Kieran. And we special Ponix here. And this is all in damage, so he can't really respond with anything. So we go Ponix Effect to get for Sanctuary here. Then we activate Sanctuary. Get into Fire King Island in main phase two. And then he actually goes uh, as a Rune here, which is very unfortunate because that does kind of stop some of our plays. We go Island Effect, popping Ponix, searching Garunix. We go Garunix Effect in hand, special summoning Garunix Effect. He chains Promethean in graveyard to pop the Garunix. We pop Baron from the deck. He pops his own Amblo here, then chains his own Garunix in graveyard. Garunix Effect to pop uh, Kieran from the deck here. And then we go Kieran Effect to special summon Arvita from the hand, popping our Kieran, which already triggered this turn. I see the writing on the wall. There's no way we're winning this game. So we end up going to game three. And this is where game three matters. We're going, this is like two and a half minutes left in time here, just because of how long game one took. So we're only two and a half minutes going into game three. So that matters a lot. And you'll see why in just one second. So in draw phase, he activates up Relia, which fucking sucks. That does do a lot against us. We activate Fire King Island here. A Fire King Island blow up Kit, which is kind of fucking insane. So we go Garunix Chain Link 1, Kit Chain Link 2, Garunix Special itself. We actually end up just dumping a Fractal because we actually hard drew Nerval. And we're only playing the one Nerval, unfortunately. So we just pop that. And then Garunix Effect on field, popping Baron. And then we go ahead and normal summon Ponix. And this is where the misplay happened because I was kind of just trying to rush just so we can, I can kind of give him a turn as well because obviously time is coming up here. So I normal summon Ponix, which I shouldn't have done. I should have normal summoned Nerval instead because technically we're losing to Imperm no matter what here. So we should have normal summoned Nerval because technically the Nerval can get us into way more here, right? So we go uh, normal summon Ponix, search for Sanctuary. And this is where I realized the misplay. We have to go Sanctuary pass and then we go bearing effect in the standby phase he changed the ash blossom which sucks because that was our only way to play he goes deception effect tributing poplar here and this is where he misplays he forgets about uh poplar we change roll on res but again time is coming up he forgets about poplar and grave that that's because time is coming up he changed wanted to the draw 
uh, to the droll, sorry. Uh, so he searches for Dia Bellstar and then just goes, Dia Bellstar sends his own deception special, then goes ahead and normal summons his own Ponix for no effect because, again, time is coming up. Attempts to go battle, we go Ponix crash into our Ponix. Shows us he hard drew Garinix three games in a row, which is unfortunate for him, but it actually ended up working quite a lot for him. So he summons Garinix, and this is where I see the writing on the wall. We're losing in time. He's inflicting damage, so we're going to lose in time. So we do end up losing this game, and this is where I shoe. We, uh, we had the Nerval, and we should have normal summoned the Nerval instead, just because even if Nerval gets hit, we have a lot more plays we could have done if we normal summoned Nerval instead. But I think it was just the panic of time coming up that made us misplay a lot there. So, yeah, uh, I can see this is already at 15 minutes, so kind of a long game, but I hope you guys did enjoy the video. D again, let me know in the comments which version of Locals you would like to see in the future. Uh, I will, you know, wh whatever I see uh, the most popular, I will go with in the future. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, more content on the channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.